Dog training is about patience, guys. Good. Come. Hop. Sit. Stay. Oh, that's a good dog, boss. That's a good dog, boss. You're just smarty. Oh, you're smarty. You did really very well. You did very well. Boss. Can look. Oh, good boy. Good, good dog. Look at his wings flying away. Ah, oh. fetch it up. Oh, good dog. Oh, you're such a fine dog. You are such a good dog. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, you're such a fine dog. Fine dog. Oh, fetch it up. Good boy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You're such a good dog. Oh, oh. Fetch it up. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Whoa. Fetch it up. Oh, good boy. Oh my gosh. You are a good dog. Something to keep in mind while you're training your lab puppy is that although, you know, in your mind you're going to take it hunting a lot and stuff and it's going to be a hunting dog, in reality what it is is it's a house dog that goes hunting sometimes, you know. And uh, that being said, you got to make sure that the dog is good at regular stuff like going to the park and playing with children. And the only way to get them used to going to the park and playing with children is to take them to the park and let them play with children. That's when you get lots of opportunities to work on uh, your puppy paying attention on under distraction, on uh, learning how to show good leadership and communication and motivation skills with your dog. Like, look at my wife going down that slide with that puppy, you know. <laughs> That's not a particularly easy thing for my wife to communicate to the puppy, so she has to get up there and do it with her. Now here, the puppy's learning that, uh, you know, when you go to the park or when you go out, you're not always the center of attention. You can be there, but a lot of times you're going to be on the margin of the activity. And dogs learning how to sit still and stay quiet and kind of be out of the way, that's what makes you want to take them places, whether it's to the park or hunting, to be honest. After a good run session, getting those puppies aired out, uh, then it's time to get to work. Now listen guys, I'm telling you, and I know y'all get tired of hearing this, but exercise is the single most important determining factor in training your dog. So you gotta get out and run them. I know you're pressed on time, but get out there and run them anyway. Working on field manners with your young dog should be your primary goal, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, look, I know you get interested in how well your dog's going to retrieve and how much drive it's going to have and how well it takes hand signals and whistle commands and whatever, but you got to realize that most people, when they get a chance to go hunting, it's only once or twice a year, and the worst thing that can happen to those people is to show up and uh, have their day ruined by a rude dog, you know? That includes a dog that's breaking or jumping or mouthing or growling at other dogs or flailing birds, you know. I mean, all across this country, every year, guys save up their vacation days just to get a chance to get in the dove field or the duck blind, and you don't want to be that person that ruins that day for them, okay? So when you're doing your training, guys, really focus on mating, making your puppy learn how to wait his turn, okay? Now, waiting his turn, teaching him to be patient, that's going to give him good field manners. But beyond that, what it's going to do is it's going to build okay. drive. And building drive is, that's important to you, and manners are important to everybody else. So it's a win-win situation. Henry. 
Watch here as boss. Now remember, guys, he's only 16 weeks old, but watch as he makes good effort here, you know. And this is after, I mean, Lord, we were out there probably working with Henry and a couple other dogs for maybe an hour before boss even got a turn, you know. And uh, so you might go, well, Stoney, what about practice? Shouldn't he have been getting more practice during that hour that he was waiting? Well, no, guys, because look what I'm doing here. See how I'm walking around in this uh, in this uh, grass piles here? You know, finding those wings in that grass pile, that's a lot of work for a young dog. And uh, he can do it, but you know, he has to do it in three to five Five minute oh sessions. He gosh, can't do it for a whole so hour. That's another you're mistake so people smart. make. Good you know, boy. you go out and you go to work on your young dog, Whoa. and if you don't watch Good. out, you spend too Good much time boy, doing boss. things like trying to make them retrieve at a no, level they're not ready to retrieve at, or asking oh them to show gosh. a you know a level of oh handler gosh, sensitivity so that they smart. haven't developed yet. Good and boy. so you know, Whoa, you you end up making the dog not like going out for training by making him wait patiently and watch other watch all the other dogs get to have fun and run and chase and fetch those dummies and fetch those wings and stuff you know that dog just sits there and he just burns with desire he gets excited 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 he just can't wait and then finally you know when you say it's your turn he's like oh wow great this is awesome I've been waiting all day you know so the I'm telling you the manners right they lead to the drive however much effort level that you have to put in to get an attention that's how much uh, you're gonna appreciate that attention so see that puppy it had to go where Henry went and had to go where Deacon went and had to go where Clementine went over and over and over again and it never got to play it never got to be the center of attention for for the whole training session and then finally when it was boss's turn man he turned it on and look how many times i'm getting him to fetch in a row you know and uh, i had to jump cut some of these because he probably retrieved 30 times and to be honest if i would have got him straight out of his uh, uh uh run and took him outside and tried to tried to get him to fetch you know i might get eight i might get nine on a good day sometimes i get five but by making him wait i get a couple of dozen oh my gosh Oh, you're a good boy. Oh, you're a good boy. After knocking out some wing and brushwork, it's off to the river. Now, I'm pretty lucky, guys. I've got some good mentor dogs around here, especially my main man, Henry, to kind of show these young dogs what's up when we get to the water. But if you don't have a mentor dog, then just put your waders on if it's wintertime and, you know, get out there and get your dog's feet wet, get their chest in the water. They don't have to swim completely, you know, just get them used to it. But if you don't get them used to it now, it's going to be real hard later. All right, here we are with Boss and Shelly. And Burr, where's Burr? You got him in that, no, yeah. uh, he's trapped in a prison. This dog here looks kind of ornery. Hey, what do you know, boss? You ready to go on a big adventure? All right, dude. Oh, let's get going. Oh, all right. Got my dog. Got me a long line here in case he goes to run away. Got another dog who has run away. Got Primo assistant. Their baby. Here we are working, making our way down to the Kentucky River. Get a little uh, retriever working. Come on, dogs. Good boy, boss. Ah, right, there goes boss. Notice I got this long line on him, so he can explore. But I can still get a hold of him if I need to. There he goes. Fine animals. So let me show you what I mean by having a mentor dog. You see how Henry is running right over there in the edge of that water to get that stick? Well, I want Boss to see Henry do it, and I want Boss to say, Me too, me too, me too, because you'll notice right now that uh, he doesn't want to get in that water, right? And uh, if it wasn't for Henry, I would have to get in that water myself <laughs> and call Boss out there, which I don't mind in the summertime, but in the wintertime, I have to put my waders on. It's a lot of work, you know. Uh, now, one thing is going on here. You look, I'm letting Boss aggravate Henry a little bit, and that does create some bad habits later on if you let it go, go on for very long. Uh, I don't plan on letting that go on for very long. I'm just, in the beginning, I'm going to let uh, Boss's desire to run and play and compete with Henry uh, I'm going to let that drive him into the water, guys. So don't worry about Boss running up there and taking that stick from Henry. Henry's got a great temperament, and uh, so he's been doing this a long time, and so he doesn't really mind. You'll notice he doesn't even fight when Boss tries to get that stick away from him. Uh, but next week, after Boss has got the habit of swimming, then, of course, I'm going to come in and tell Boss that he has to wait his turn. Again, guys, field banners is the most important thing we're working on here. You would never want to take a dog out to a field and have that happen. But I need Boss to be competitive because I need him to override this fear that he has of the water right now watch him stop right here 
Okay, you see that? He thinks that that little bit of water there that's about seven inches deep, he thinks that's a black hole that if he falls down, there's no recovering from. So he had to really, like, get his courage up and see that Henry was on the other side of it to make it across that giant hole of water. Now, we all know it's not a very big hole, but you got to remember, this is his first time. And when it's their first time, guys, it you know, it can be traumatic for them. It's just like trying to get a little kid in a swimming pool. If you just take a little kid to a swimming pool and try to get them to swim, they're wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. But if they're big brothers there and all their big brothers friends are there hey before you know it they're going watch me watch me watch me and they're jumping off the high dive and and really trying to show out well that's what i use a mentor dog for is i use a mentor dog to force the younger dogs to compete and to be brave and to vie for my attention and you'll notice that it's working perfectly here you see how boss has really loosened up in the beginning he was running big circles around the water trying to stay on the sand and now he's like uh you know doing a lot better he's getting a little closer running a lot straighter line when i saw that i decided it's time to throw the dummy in the water for boss himself and watch i didn't throw it very deep at first i just threw it so he'd have to kind of weigh it out there about pasture deep and bring it back and i mean i really lavished the praise on the dog right here i'm so happy that he went across that giant deep black hole of water that i'm really making over him here like you know you have to tell your dogs guys that they're the best retrievers they're the smartest dogs they're the fastest runners if you want them to believe in themselves you have to show them that you believe in them first you know and so i'm throwing that uh, dummy out there right to the edge of the water and i'm going to end with just a little bit farther out in the water not much just a little bit all i'm trying to do is get him to get his chest wet you know if he'll get his chest wet today then tomorrow he'll oh, get uh, up boy, there boss. past his shoulders and once good he gets past boy. his shoulders he starts floating boss, and then he's swimming so it's boy. just a you know just build on what you got incremental good progress boy. guys just go out there and try to make a little bit of extra progress oh, every day and if you don't have a dog to drive him. him okay well then listen you're going to be the mentor in that situation and you're going to have to get out there and get wet and cold oh, boy, but boy, hey it's worth it because in the end, you're going to have a dog that minds real well. It's got good field manners and is a tremendous retriever. And all your friends are going to be jealous. And there's nothing better than having a dog that's better than your friend's dog. <laughs> that's actually the most fun part of having a hunting dog, you know. So get out there. Get wet if you have to. And remember, when your dog's doing these things, don't look for the wrong stuff that he's doing. Look for the right stuff he's doing. He's the best. He's the smartest. He's the, he's the bravest, you know. Because you have to believe in him, guys. Confidence is built on success and success. Success is defined by the handler. So be the kind of handler that defines success in every session. All right, good luck. Get out there and get some training going.